The FBI announced today they foiled a plot by right-wing extremists to kidnap the governor of Michigan. According to the complaint, at least six men were involved in staking out Governor Gretchen Whitmer's vacation home, allegedly planning to kidnap her and potentially use bombs, even blowing up a bridge to keep police away. The state also filed terrorism charges against seven other right-wing extremists in Michigan, members of group who were in contact with the six men who were charged by the FBI. Governor Whitmer has been under attack for months thanks to her swift and thorough response to the coronavirus pandemic in her state. As NBC News reporters Ben Collins and Brandy Zdrozny noted back in April after the president tweeted out, liberate Michigan, extremists took that as a kind of call to arms. Armed anti-COVID restriction extremists even showed up at the state capitol. Remember that? Back in April. They demanding lawmakers lift the lockdown. And according to a Detroit television reporter, at least two of the men charged today were at those protests. Governor Whitmer held firm on her covert measures, and her favorability rating is still high, 51% right now. Today, she addressed the plot against her and made a plea for unity. I want the people of Michigan to know this. As your governor, I will never stop doing everything in my power to keep you and your family safe. You don't have to agree with me, but I do ask one thing. Never forget that we are all in this together. Let's show a little kindness and a lot more empathy. Let's give one another a little grace and let's take care of each other. Joining me now, Democratic Michigan State Senator Dana Polhanke, who was at the State House back in April when armed protesters, including some of the people arrested today, showed up. At that time, she tweeted this photo back then, writing directly above me, men with rifles yelling at us. Some of my colleagues who own a bulletproof vest are wearing them. I have never appreciated our sergeant at arms more than today. A Michigan State Senator, it's great to have you. Um, first reaction to hearing this news and, and, and learning that it, it appears that two of those men involved in this alleged plot were there armed in the state capitol. Yeah, I'm a, a little bit shaken, Chris. I'm, I'm still shaken, um, even more so to learn that uh, two of the men in the photo that I took are conspirators in this plot to kidnap the governor and uh, storm the Capitol. I, I really do feel grateful, though, however, to our Attorney General Dana Nessel, the FBI, the Michigan State Police, the U.S. Attorney's Office for thwarting this plot. I'm just so grateful, and I wanted to make sure I said that. What has the, 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 the reaction been among you, your colleagues today? I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I can imagine this being some moment of kind of bipartisan unity. I mean, it, it, it's, it, if the plot is what is alleged by uh, the government, it's pretty horrifying and, and, and scary for all involved. Do you have a sense of what the reaction has been more broadly? You would think there would be bipartisan unity, wouldn't you? <laughs> Unfortunately, um, just today, the person who was in charge of moving bills, our Senate Majority Leader, um, pretty much said there he doesn't plan on acting to prohibit guns from our capital to, to keep us safe. He said we can't legislate and get rid of all risk. Um, he talks about needing to be strong and not be afraid of those who are taking our freedoms away. And it just seems like their intent on baiting this group. There was a group at the Capitol today and the majority leader said those words to them on the, on the Capitol steps. There were, some of them were armed too. I had to be escorted to my office today by the sergeants at arms because there were guns at the Capitol today. It's just, yeah, you'd think it'd be bipartisan. It's not. Wait, I want to make sure I understand. So you're saying there were protesters there today outside the Capitol. Yes. And they were and, and some of them had uh, weapons on them, which uh, it, yes. is, is protected by state laws. I understand. I think they're, they're allowed to open carry on Capitol grounds. Um, and and you, inside the Capitol, except you can't carry signs in our Capitol. Is that right? You can't carry signs in our Capitol, but you can carry a, a, a long gun? This, that is absolutely correct. You can um, open carry, concealed carry, but there is fear that the signs may chip the paint on the walls of our beautiful capital. So signs are not allowed. I mean, it, it really does. I, I remember when, when we had you, I think, on the program uh, back in April. 
Um, and I remember looking at these images and really being, you know, thinking they were they were pretty menacing. Um, and to see that there was a, an actual plot, that there were talks of um, possibly constructing IEDs, of kidnapping the governor and, and, and bringing her to Mackinac Island, where I think she has a, 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 some kind of house, and having a show trial for treason. Um, I can understand why you were looking over your shoulder today of all days with armed protesters outside your door. Yeah, I every day when I enter the Capitol floor, I look into the gallery for armed gunmen. I keep a bulletproof vest under my desk. And that's just how it is in my workplace. And it's unfortunate. You know, the the plot, the, the news today was, of course, about the plot to kidnap the governor, which is bad enough. But in the affidavit, there was also a plot to storm our Capitol with hundreds of armed men, take hostages, kidnap politicians. And just today we had kids visiting our Capitol, sitting in that same gallery where the armed men were. And I'm just afraid for them. I'm afraid for them, for myself, my colleagues, the staff, the journalists, everyone.